Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, nice to have you here, guys. Good evening. Hey, good evening. Welcome. Alrighty. Oh, nice. Hi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Nice. We have new faces today. <laughs> good. <laughs> so welcome, good evening, Mariana. Teacher. Hey, good evening, Elizabeth. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'm sorry if you hear my voice. It's a little bit, um, um, what maybe grave, uh, but it's because I'm a little bit sick. <clears throat> um, and I have like the flu. I hope it's just the flu. So <laughs> if not, si no le va a cambiar el teacher. No, mentira. Este, creo que solo hay gripe, y, pero sí me, me ha afectado un poquito la garganta. Así que les, si me escuchan raro, es, eh, es eso, ¿no? Um, no traten de ajustar el, el, el headset, es el mi voz. <laughs> All right, nice. Okay, then. So, let's see, let's see. Well, really nice to have you here. It's been a rainy day. It's been, well, it's Monday. It's just the start of the week. And it's really good to be here with you guys. So, I know there was a homework for today. But <clears throat> we're going to wait for, well, for the rest of the people. Uh, hopefully, uh, everybody's going to connect soon. So we'll see, right? So we'll check that homework uh, later on during uh, the class, right? Okay, then. So let's get down to business here. And let's just, let's see. All right, let's make a little review on what we were studying the other day. Uh, the other day, if you remember, uh, we were talking a little bit about what topic? What was the name of that last topic we studied? Any ideas? No ideas. Don't remember exactly. All right. So if you don't remember it, that topic was um, pretty much what clauses, right? If what clauses are, we were saying these, a parts of, of, of these ideas inside a sentence, right, in which, or that actually helped us to emphasize some ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So just to have a little review on that, we're going to watch a little video and then we're going to actually, we're going to, well, review some examples. So let's see, let's see. I'm going to share my screen so that we all can see it. So here we go. All righty. So I guess you can see my screen now. So here we go. All right. So let's pay attention to the video. Let's watch, let's listen. And then we talk a little bit about that. So here we go. Hi there, are you okay? In this class we study what clauses, what clauses, sentences with what. These sentences are used when we want to reinforce our opinion in a paragraph. It's called a thesis statement. It's our it's the sentence about our opinion. Example, you have a sentence like this. It's essential to have a good relationship with your family. If you want to reinforce your point of view, you just say, what is essential is to have a good relationship with your family. Another example. Everyone needs the support of their family. If you want to reinforce this, 
what everyone needs is the support of their family. Another example. It's important to show respect to your family members. You can reinforce by saying, what is important is to show respect to your family members. Another example. It's clear family relationships are stronger than friendships. You can say, what is clear is family relationships are stronger than friendships. Another one. This means that blood really is thicker than water. What this means is that blood really is thicker than water. What I'm doing, I'm doing what clauses to reinforce my point of view, to express my thesis statement. Do you understand? Please, I'm going to tell you two sentences and you comment here what clauses with these sentences. It's essential to respect your parents. Please comment the what clause for this sentence. Another sentence. I love to spend time with my friends. Please. Comment here the what clauses for these sentences. I want to see your examples. Thank you very much. I'm Felipe Gibi. See you next class. In this class, I'm going to read you some sentences and... All right, all right, all right. So there you go. So based on this video, when do we use a what clauses? How do we use them? What do you think? Any volunteer? When do we use these what clauses? <clears throat> volunteers, volunteers. <laughs> Nobody. No one. Maybe. Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay, Maria Linda. Hey. Uh -huh. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, maybe when do you want? No. Who is the other person uh, now or something? Uh -huh. mm, when you want to know what the other person uh, know the about opinion, something. The uh -huh. opinion. Uh -huh. opinion. Close, indeed. So, very good. It actually, it, or these clauses actually help us to provide opinions, right? Very good. So, whenever we are going to give or whenever we want to say what we think, right? We make use of these expressions, right? What I think, yeah? What I consider important, what you need to understand, etc., etc., etc. right? So many examples in which we can actually use these expressions or these what clauses. So very good. Now, before we continue, I'm going to take the attendance, right? The, now that we had, or that we had this little review, uh, before I forget, <clears throat> I'm going to pass the attendance and let me see. Then we are just going to go over that little homework that you had for today. So let's see. All right, so remember, I will call your name. <clears throat> And then you, well, just say present, presente, right, as you prefer. So, and don't forget to turn on a, your camera. So, let's see. Here, wait, wait. Here we go. All right. So, let's see. Uh, we start. Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Present teacher. All right, thank you, uh, Beatrice. Very good. Uh, Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga Mejia. Present <laughs> teacher. Thank you, Blanquita. Very good. 
Then we have Carlos Antonio Escobar Hernandez. Present. All right, thank you, Carlos, very good. Then we have Carlos Javier Crespin Lopez. Present teacher. All right, very good. Nice to have you here, Carlos, welcome. So nice. Then we thank have, you, thank you. all right, anytime. Then we have also Christian Ernesto Lasso. Present teacher. All right, very good, Christian. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Denise. Very good. We continue with Ember Giovanni Polio Morales. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Ember. Very good. Uh, then we have uh, Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Elizabeth. Very good. Then we continue with Jose Eduardo Guzman Alvarez. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose. Very good. And then we have uh, Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Juan Carlos Rivas. No, right, didn't come. Okay. So let's see. Then we have. Y Karen Vanessa Morataya. Hi, teacher president. Hey, Karen. Nice to have you here. Welcome. Glad you could join us today. <laughs> nice. Very good. So next we have, let's see, Luis Alfonso Martinez Perez. Present teacher. All right. Thank you, Luis. Very good. Then we have Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. I am here, teacher. All right, nice. Thank you, Maria Elena. Glad you could join us too. Excellent. And then we have uh, Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Presente, teacher. Nice. Present. <laughs> Thank you, Nelson. Very good. <laughs> nice you could join us. Good. Then we have Omar Francisco Hernandez. Present. All right. Thank you, Omar. Thank you very much. Then we have Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Oscar, and welcome. And last but not least, we have Jenny Suleima Santos Chavez. Jenny, one, Jenny, two, not here. Okay, Jenny, not here right now. Okay, then, very good. So thank you guys. And this being said, eh, let's see, let's see. Let's check about that homework that was pending in which, in which you had to present, if you remember a product, right? Eh, from your own company or from a company that you had invented, right? So let's see, let's check that homework. Any volunteers that would like to go first? Voluntarios. No volunteers. Nobody. Me, teacher. Huh? Oh, okay, there you go. So, Luis, nice. With Omar, with Omar okay? Okay, so Luis and Omar there. Very good. Okay. Teacher, uh, in Spanish, voy a compartir la pantalla. Ah, no nice. Idea. Excellent. Sí, Very good. Corrige, corrige, por favor. Sure, sure. Let's see. All right. Very good. Nice. Okay. Okay, Omar. Omar. Yes, yes, Mr. <laughs> okay, ready? Ready. Yes. Excellent. So, lights, camera, action. Okay. Hello, Omar. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. What I helped you? Okay, Omar. Why are the one is a quotation of the, div of the different security club for the heal my employee? What? 
I recommend is the safety certificate glow. Can you give me more information, please? What I saying is this product have a high resisting against the bar. The <coughs> knock on two are very soft and the price is the best. Okay, Mark, one question more on the warranty. What do you tell me? Mm, okay, Louis, do you know this product is certified uh, no defect or manufacturing? The warrant is total, I change the product. Okay, Omar, please send me to my email documentation. And you wait for the acceptation or not? Thank you for your time. Bye. Only that teacher. All right, that was that was good. Nice. All right. So can you can you uh, leave the screen uh, just for a couple of minutes more? I would just uh, tell you uh, some some corrections there. Okay. Uh, sorry, that's teacher. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> So, uh, all right, there you go. Okay, so the idea was really good. And actually you used uh, some of these what clauses in a really nice way. I, so uh, uh, I would say uh, here, right? What I, when it says, hello, Omar, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, let me see. Here, when it says what I'm helping you, what do you want it to say exactly? ¿Qué quería decir acá? ¿Cuál oración? En la segunda, acá en What I'm Help You. ¿Me puedes ayudar? ¿Qué le puedo ayudar? Ah, how can I help you then? Or eh, maybe, hmm, what can I do to help you? How can I help you? Maybe. But in this case, maybe we would use it eh, like in a different way, right? It would be a different eh, expression, probably. Right, so probably you would like to change that, and then Louis uh -huh, says, Okay, Omar, what I want, no todo el tiempo ocupamos am, right? Y we use whenever we want to use another verb, like in this case, when you're saying what I want, right? I have another verb there, want, so I don't need to use the verb to be am. I only need the subject, uh, the subject pronoun, I. So, en este caso, omitimos, el, ah, exacto, el verb to be, lo omitimos, solo dejamos I, right? What I want is a quotation of the different uh, security gloves, security, right? Con C acá, security. Y for the health of my employees, of my employees, the mis empleados, right? Of my employees, of acá, y, uh -huh. of excellent, of my employees, employees, doble E, una S, right? <coughs> employees. Error de dedo, teacher. <laughs> yeah, in, in inglés diríamos un, un typo, right? So that's a typo. <laughs> nice, very good. Yes, so nice, very thank good. You, thank you, yeah. thank you. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. That's fine. Y ahí solo, eh, lo mismo, creo que tiene el mismo error con el verb to be, eh, varias veces, el what I, what I recommend, for example, sin la M, ¿no? What I recommend. Teacher, sí, sí. Okay, uh -huh. teacher, sorry. sorry yes. Eh, Eh, lo pusimos así porque así están las cláusulas que queríamos utilizar. Here we have something. Aquí me han puesto y me han ocupado un ed en el verbo y es como que si dijera lo que yo recomendado o lo que yo estoy recomendado. So, ah, es por el verbo. Ajá. Okay. So, what I need, si yo quiero ocupar este verbo, lo voy a ocupar en presente. Eh, o sea, yo diría, what I recommend, lo que yo recomiendo, right? Y ahí es donde no utilizaría entonces el verb to be, right? Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So okay. th that's what uh, you should change. Then here, it's okay. What I'm saying is very good. Certificated, right? Acá es una T. Certificated, right? Certificated gloves. And <clears throat> then I would say a garantía, a, the, warrant, the warranty. Warranty, doble R, a T, Y, right? Y al final, warranty. So a, that's how we spell it, right? The warranty. And that pretty much, right? Uh -huh. ah, ah, there you go. Excellent. What do you tell me? And then it's there you there you have. All right, but the idea was really good. So congratulations, Luis okay. and Omar. That was really nice. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Just thank you, teacher. All right, anytime. My pleasure. All righty. So any other volunteer? Que elija Luis, entonces. <laughs> <laughs> so you go ahead, Luis. You're going to be the bad boy, not me. <laughs> You're a mute, Luis. Sorry, Carlos Antonio. Oh, All right. right. Let's see then. All right. So, Carlos Antonio. Let's see. And your partner, okay. Carlos. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> nice, nice. Who's your partner, Carlos? My conversation I was uh, Blanquita. Oh, nice. Very good. So, Blanquita and Carlos. Okay. Uh, Ready? Yes. Nosotros okay. hicimos una presentación. Dice. Oh, very good. Nice. Excellent. Uh, no, a, a little presentation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. What, what, you, what you need is to have a great product. The product is a soft drink. Uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Eh, hicimos un cambio. Perdón. Uh, okay. Okay. Comienzo. Okay. On a hot date, what you need is to have a great product. The product is a soft drink. Only that. <laughs> okay, nice. All right, so that's it for, for the two of you? Yes. All right, very good. So if you said that you had a presentation. If you have like a- oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. So very good. So on a hot day, what you need is a soft drink, you said. Yes. Oh, there you go. Nice. So a soft drink is what we would call un refresco, right? So yeah. un fresco, like we would say here to be more specific. Right. So nice. Very good. All right. Thank you very much then, uh, Carlos and Blanquita. Let's see. Um, Carlos, you select another person. Okay, a Jose Eduardo Guzmán. All right, Jose Eduardo. Let's see. Buena puntería, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Con todo cariño, yo es. Teacher, este, <laughs> Teacher eh, Ajá. Fíjense que con la compañera que estábamos teacher as, eh, no los pusimos eh, de acuerdo y no, no terminamos la tarea teacher Jesus Christ Pero... continue, eh? with me teacher oh my god para bajarles aquí los dos puntos de no mentira <laughs> so, <laughs> no that's fine um, let's do something I will give you the chance that you can do it uh, tomorrow all right so you get together or you uh, get into I don't know, we, we talk about it and then you create something simple and you can do it tomorrow, all right? So that's okay. fine. Nice. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Nice, okay. So, Denise, you select another person then. Okay. Um, Christian Ernesto. Christian, Lasso. let's see. 
Christian Ay, Ernesto. Lo habías dicho. Hey, Christian. Eh, bueno, en español. Ajá. Igual que los compañeros. Eh, oh, my God. Por, <risa> por razones de tiempo, igual no nos pudimos poner de acuerdo con <risa> eh, mi compañero en este caso fue Nelson. All right. Pero, oh, Nelson. Si nos permite mañana. Okay, tomorrow. Good. Please Who's ready? Thank Who's you. ready for today? All right. Nice, Christian. Alguien que esté listo para ahora. Nobody. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Nelson, you you ready or no? Hello, teacher. Hey there. <laughs> No, Ron, are you, are you, you have something for today? No. Ya, ya, tengo, ya tengo dos puntos abajo también. <laughs> ah, caray. <laughs> okay, no, so don't worry. So let's leave then that for tomorrow, then, okay? Because we need to, to move on. Uh, so don't worry, guys. Uh, let's just leave it for okay. tomorrow. But uh, just don't let me down for tomorrow, okay? I will give you the chance. Nice. All righty then. So, uh -huh. Yes, well, Oscar. Yes. You ready? Okay, okay, okay. All right, nice. Very good. Let's see. Give me one more. Sure. Okay. I need a bio club. The first, the club has high quality and durability. The price is no more expensive. The preference to manufacture in metal and black color. I need to a small club. Uh, what my friends need, one a presentation for lady and one a presentation for gentlemen. The people like traditional club, don't like, don't like digital club. Right, there you go. So in this case, I understand the product is like a watch. Yes, watch. Ah, it's a watch. Uh, a clock is what we hang on the wall, right? So okay. if it's on the wall, that's a clock. If it's on our wrist, that's a watch. So that's cool, nice. So there is, it comes in two presentations for gentlemen and ladies, you said. Yes. All right. <laughs> so nice, nice. So you had to include the two presentations. There you go. So excellent, that was very nice. That was very creative. So you even thought about the metal colors and everything. So good. So excellent. Thank you very much then, Oscar and Beatriz, right? So you both work together. Perfect. Yes. All right, excellent. Any other a, a person that is ready for today? I can give you the chance. Nobody else? Okay, then. So let me see. So that means uh, Carlos, Blanquita, Omar, Luis, Oscar, and Beatriz. You have a point for the test, all right? So for the midterm test, you will earn a point for that test. So nice, well done. So you see. All right. So I me acuerdo. Lo voy a apuntar, pero me acuerdo. All right. So good. Now, let's continue then, uh, well, with the topic that we have for today. For the rest, uh, don't, uh, don't forget this homework for tomorrow. Remember homework, uh, assignments, they are uh, also evaluations, right? So don't forget it. So here we go. Then. Uh, I guess we're done with this, uh, what clauses, and today we can start talking a little bit about imperatives. Have you ever heard about imperatives? What do you know about it? Does that ring a bell to you? Mm, teacher in, in uh -huh. Spanish. No, in right. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No tiene sujeto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Nice. Excellent. Mm, for, for, uh -huh. example, for example, in English. Uh -huh. Have a good uh -huh. night. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Exactly. Have a good night, right? Yes. <laughs> This is an example of an imperative, and if you think about it, it's as, uh, um, as Elizabeth said, right, 
they have no subject in those sentences. So when do we use imperatives? What's like the main use of these imperative sentences? Do you remember? <laughs> Is, I don't remember how you say in, in this mandat, mandar. Uh, it's to give an... For, for example, uh -huh. take a shower. <laughs> okay, good example. There you go. Take a shower. <laughs> so when you actually tell a person you have to do this, right? Take a shower for God's sake, right? So exactly. Let's review something about imperatives. Imperatives are actually, let's say, uh, something really easy. So let's see. If you check, dun, 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 dun. let's see, that's on page, if you check your books, that's on page um, 13, right? Page 13. There you have this um, short conversation in which you have, well, let me share my screen so that we can all see it. Here we have some examples on the use of imperatives, right? So there you go. So it says, there we have, a, well, Mr. A, Nunez and Roland. So, a, casualidad, there you go. <laughs> okay, so it says, I'm gonna read it first and then uh, I'll tell you what you're going to do after uh, I read this conversation for you. So it says, hello, Mr. Roland. Uh, today is your first day at the plant. Uh, my name is Ms. Nunez, and I'm going to explain what you must do in the production line. Uh, Mr. Roland, nice to meet you, Ms. Nunez. Uh, where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please. A push this red button, second, grab a pair of tongs and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart and check every piece. Make sure each meets the specifications in this chart. Third, place the defective chocolate in this funnel. Finally, fill in a report at the end of the day about the defective pieces. So there you go. Let's see, any questions in terms of a vocabulary or something like that? I guess there are some words here that are very curious. Any new word? Uh, teacher, what is the meaning uh, tones? Tongues. So in this case, um, we have these are like um, how do we how can we call it tenazas, right? That's what we would say. So um, it's like to grab something, right? It's this tool that we use to grab something. So we would say in Spanish tenazas or pinzas, right? Tongues. Okay. Thanks. Nice. Very good. No confundir con otra palabra y que lleva H. Right? So that's a different thing. So there you go. There is another word that says. Chef, ¿Cuál es la que lleva H? <laughs> Se lo dejo de tarea. Díganos de un solo, no me dejes de tarea. <laughs> me compromete, me compromete. <laughs> so, anyway, another word there. Conveyor, build. Conveyor belt is this thing that is like a band that is moving, right? It's moving around where when you are like in a, a assembling some products, they are moving or the pieces are moving sometimes in these uh, conveyor belts, right? Como una banda. Um, I guess we would say just like a, a, a banda, right? Magnetica, maybe. Banda transportadora. Transportadora, exactly. So that's a, that's what this conveyor belt is, right? Very good. So 
Let's see. I guess that's pretty much it. Any other word that you think is new for you? Please, <clears throat> teacher, what do you mean in funeral? Funeral. Funeral. That's like this thing that we use to put sometimes oil, for example, in the car, you use a funeral. It's what we would call an embudo in Spanish, right? So that's a funeral. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Tell me. Yeah, conveyor. A conveyor belt is what we said, like la banda transportadora, conveyor belt. All right. Sure. Uh huh. The word defective. Defective. Defective, defective. is that it's got a flaw, right? It's that it's got a, a defect, right? So it's defective, defectuoso. Yeah. In this clay, in this case, it's making reference to a, maybe a piece of chocolate that is not exactly a, the way it should be. Maybe it's irregular or it's got some. A, problem of the sort, right? It's not exactly what they are looking for, what they need for the manufacturing. So that's why it says, uh, or it talks about defective chocolate. So nice. Any other question? Michelle, uh, uh -huh. chart? Uh, chart, this one. Yes. All right, read this chart. Chart is uh, like a sign, right? It's a little, eh, como un cartelito, we would say. Eh, so it could be, a, well, it's exactly that, right? like a, a, like a, something like a sign with some directions, probably. So that's why it says, read this chart and check every piece, right? So probably this chart contains instructions so that this person it can do well that specific part of the job. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Any other word? All right. So teacher. Uh -huh. Tell me. Drink a ginger. Drink a uh -huh. ginger and lemon. Yes, indeed. I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I'm actually dying here i've been the whole day really sick so i'm sorry <laughs> my voice is abandoning abandoning me today but anyway but i'll see i'll see if later i can drink something <laughs> but thank you it's imperative yes there you go <laughs> good example all right now Actually, speaking of imperatives, here we have some examples on the use of imperatives. So we have, for example, push this red button, right? Please push this red button. Second, grab a pair of tongs and pick every piece of chocolate. Read this chart and check every piece. Third, place the defective chocolate in this funeral. And finally, fill in a report. So all these instructions that this person is providing, they are all examples on imperatives. So this person is making this guy to follow some directions, right? That's another use that we give to imperatives. Not all the time, it necessarily needs to be that we uh, need to provide orders to people. Uh, we can also give instructions, right? So it's uh, something that in which we could uh, use imperatives as well. Now let's check this conversation. So let's see. Um, let me see someone new. So let me see. Can you help me with the conversation? Uh, Karen, so Karen, you're going to be Miss Nunez and let's okay. see, all right, and Juan Carlos, you're going to be Roland. Okay. All right, so let's see. Lights, camera, action. 
Hello, Mr. Roland. Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Mr. Miss Nuno, uh -huh. and I'm going to explain what you must do, what you, what must, you must do, do. in the production line. Good. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Nunez. Miss Nunez. Miss Miss Nunez. Yes. Where do you where do we start? First, you are in charge of stopping the in charge mm -hmm. of stopping the conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Okay. Conveyor belt. Okay. okay. Stopping your belt. Please push this red button. Second, grab a pair of songs and pick every piece of chocolate, read this chart, and check every piece. Make sure each meet the specification in this chart. Third, place the, the defective chocolate, in, chocolate. In, mm -hmm. final, in, chocolate in this tunnel. Mm -hmm. Fill in the at the end of the day about the defective pieces. Very good, nice, excellent. So good, nice job. So let's see, very good. Let's see another two people. So Miss hmm, Nunez, y, let me see, Maria Elena. And all right, very good. And Roland, let me see. Um, dum, 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 dum. Ember. Okay. All right. I am a star, Ember. Hi. It's good to see you. Hello, Mr. Ronald. <laughs> Today is your first day at the plant. My name is Miss Nunez, and I'm mm -hmm. going to explain what must you do in the production line? Nice to right, meet you. Very good. Nice to meet you, Miss Nunez. Where do we start? Uh, first, you are in charge of stopping the conveyor belt. Please push this red button. Second, grab a pair of tongues. A pair of tongues? Uh, of tongs and pick every piece of chocolate. Uh, read this chart and check every piece. Make sure each meets the specification in this chart. And third, uh, place of the, the detective chocolate in this funeral. Final, fill in a report. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I wrote the detective, defective piece. Pieces, there you go. All right, good. So just be careful here, where was it? I don't know, I, I lost it. Um, be careful in words. Uh, remember that start with S, for example, start, right? Start, where do we start? If same happens with, for example, what it says, um, stopping, right? Stopping, stopping. So it's like an S, no, it's A, right? No, it's a start, a stopping, mm -mm. start, stopping. It's an S sound. So just keep that in mind. But then the rest, very good. Specifications also, right? Specifications. So nice, good. All right, let's see two more people. So thank you very much, guys. If two more people, let's see. Um, let's see. Um, Blanquita, you're going to be Miss Nunez. And let me see. Nelson, you're going to be Roland. Okay. All right. Hello, Mr. Roland. Today is your first day on the plant. On the plant. My name is Miss Nunez, and I'm going to play what you must do in the products of the plant. Okay. 
Nelson. Okay, nice to me, you, Miss Nunez. Where do you we start? Where do we start? <laughs> Where is the start? Conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. Yeah. Please push the bell button second grab out. First, Austin. Ah, third Austin. Nice. And pick every piece of chocolate. Third, Sir, uh, and check every piece. Make make two. It may be a specific. Uh -huh. Come on. Specific. Specific. Uh -huh. in the shop. Here, place place the perfect chocolate. Is this funeral? Funeral. 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 Uh huh. Finally, is there in a report and the M on the day about the recipe piece. pieces? Pieces. 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 Uh -huh. Pieces. There you go. Nice. So, if you remember in our, well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Good job. If you remember in our previous class, we mentioned something about the pronunciation of the R, right? So, it's first. First, not fierce, first, right? E, same happens with third, third. E, yes, Denise, you raise your hand. Uh, yes, teacher. Um, I have a doubt with the yeah. context or definition of the word, the chart. Ajá. Eh, usted dijo que era como un rotulito, ¿verdad? O algo así. Yes, it could be. Uh -huh. In my case, I know in, in my my job, mm -hmm. I I work with control chart. In this case, mm -hmm. is a, a industry, uh -huh. and this uh, is how do you say utilizado? It's used. Uh -huh. it's used sorry, uh -huh. it's nice. used for the information on the mm -hmm. limit that the the machines work or the product that is specification. Uh -huh. In this case, I imagine it's, it's this because it said read this chart mm -hmm. and check every piece. Eh, tiene que ver las características en uh -huh. ese como formato. Entonces no solo exactly. es el, sino que es como las especificaciones exactly. que tiene que tener el producto. Creo que no me dio, no, no, no lo supe expresar así. <laughs> But yes, es como me refería a que es como un cartelito donde están exactamente esas cosas, ¿no? Eh, y tal vez no un cartel, sino un sign, como les decía, es como un... Eh, un gráfico, teacher, o un, un, un instructivo. Más o menos como un, ajá, un instructivo, tal vez, eh, que tienen estas como, en este caso, las especificaciones, y eh, para que él, basándose en eso, descarte ciertos productos, ¿no? Como lo hacía, eh, ¿qué es lo que dice después? Y, que based on that, he's going to discard certain pieces of chocolate that they are defective. But how do we know that they are defective? That's the information that we're going to find in that chart. But very good. So anyway, nice clarification. And Denise, thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> nice. All righty. So let's see. Now that we have reviewed this conversation, that we have checked a couple of examples here, he will also have some questions. And it says, here we have a little exercise, right? In which we need to answer the questions based on the conversation. So let's see. It says, get in pairs and discuss the answers to the questions below. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, give you, in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to give you just like five minutes so that you can answer these questions. But let me see. So here we go. 
we're going to answer this question. So we're going to work in breakout rooms. Um, I have a situation here, or are we okay? Okay, no, I guess we're cool. So it says, uh, we're going to work in some groups, right? In this case, no, something's wrong here. ¿Por qué te a Nelson conectado dos veces? Are you in two devices, Nelson? Sí, teacher, es que a veces uso la compu también, a veces uso el celular por eso. Oh, yeah, because I see you. Es que tengo el audio y la cámara. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Ahí es que no me salían las cuentas. <laughs> All right, nice. So, <laughs> let me see. Good, so then the groups are going to be Carlos, Karen and Nelson, you're working together. Jose Eduardo, Juan Carlos, and Luis, you're working together. Ember, well, Ember and Omar, you're working together. Francis, Elizabeth, and Maria Elena, and Jenny, you're also working together. And Blanca and Carlos, you're working together. Ana Beatriz and Denise, you too, and Christian and Oscar, all right? So I'm going to start uh, the small session so that you can join. And you will have only uh, five minutes so that you can answer the questions based on the conversation uh, that we just reviewed. So you can join to the groups now, and then uh, we come back to the main session, all right, after five minutes. <clears throat> All right, nice. Cool. If someone has problems to join, just let me know.
All right, little by little, I guess we are coming back. Let's wait for the rest. So let's see. And here we have some more people. All right. <clears throat> And a couple of seconds for the rest to come. Here they are, I guess. Yes, okay. All right, guys, so hope I didn't interrupt. Hope you had enough time to complete it. So let's see, let's answer the question. So let's see what you did actually uh, here. So let me see. Um, Easy. Let's see. Jenny, who's responsible for stopping the conveyor belt? Uh, Mr. Roland is responsible. Mr. Roland is uh, the responsible one. Very good. Nice. So, number two, what are some of Mr. Roland's responsibilities? Let's see. Um, Jose Eduardo. Jose Eduardo, are you there? Se quedó en el baño, Jose Eduardo. All right. So let's see um, who else is there. So number two, Luis. Hi, teacher. Let's see. What are some of Mr. Roland's responsibilities, Luis? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, some responsibility, Mr. Roland. Is Some of Mr. Number Roland's responsibilities. Uh -huh. Number one, number uh -huh. one, uh, push the red button, uh, check every piece, 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 como se pronuncia? Piece, piece, uh, piece. piece uh, check every piece and file and a report. So, are some <laughs> some responsibilities all right there you no, go no no all okay not all of them all right nice so okay you mentioned push the red button you said uh, to check check every, every piece check to, every piece uh -huh. and file in a report fill in fill in a report right so fill in a report Okay, thank you. Fill in a report. There you go, a report. Very good. Fill in a report. All right. And well, pretty much Roland's responsibilities are the ones that are involved later here. But what about number three? What kind of machinery is there in your workplace? Um, let's see. And let me see. Carlos, Antonio. What kind of machine of, of machinery is there in your workplace? Okay, in my office, uh, but office equipment, uh -huh. computer, mm -hmm. telephone, uh, impressor, or printer, yeah, printers, printer, uh -huh. printer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, computer, uh -huh. uh, conveyor belt. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Power gener generator, generator, uh, power generator. generator. Uh -huh. very good. Uh -huh. And X ray particip uh, accelerator. Accelerator? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Very good. What? Uh, where do you work? One more time. Trabajo para una empresa que se llama Cotecna. Realizamos impresiones no intrusivas en aduanas. Oh, I see. Oh, that's why the use of this, this machine. Aduana, aduanas, aeropuertos. Customs. Eh, uh -huh. Customs. Uh, um, también en el puerto de Cajutla, sepa. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. Very good. Interesting. All right. So that explains, uh, well, the use of that, uh, of those machines. So very good. Excellent. All right, Carlos. 
What about in your case? Eh, thank you. What about in your case? Let me see. Um, Denise. Okay. Uh, it's difficult to describe the kind of machine uh, that okay. I have the company because mm -hmm. it's a company of the manufacturing uh -huh. for a little pieces electronic. Electronic, like electronic pieces? Ah, yes, capacitors. Oh, I see, capacitors. Interesting. Yes. What, what's the uh, name of the company? Uh, ABX Industries El Salvador. Oh, perfect. All right. Yes. And and song, six, about that, oh about the 300 kind of machine. What? Maybe. Oh my God. Yes. Jesus. Uh, but the, the common that I work in another kind mm -hmm. is in the tape and reels. Uh -huh. That machine is for the tape, literal in, in reels, <laughs> the uh -huh. capacitors. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, this machine could the piece. And put in the Cupcakes. in the blister uh -huh. with the cover in in the superface uh, in the surface. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. and put in, in reels for pass for other area. Wow, very good. So, yes. so it's I I imagine that then in your case it's like it's got like a lot of processes. I guess right. So. Every yes. part goes to a different well, machine. In different my case, part. when I start the war, I <laughs> never imagined this kind of machine. Oh, wow. Eh, I, de, I de hecho, Blanca trabaja ahí mismo. Ah, nice. Very good. Oh, wow. So you are uh, co-workers? Mm, yes. Where but you are? in Your different precarious. areas, yes. Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. Very good. Nice. So good. So let's see... Uh, one more, one more. What about you? Teacher, uh -huh. teacher sorry, la lista. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, Luis. I, I always forgot the one at nine. So thank you very much <laughs> for the reminder. So let's see. One more opinion and then we go for, for the list. So let's see. Um, Karen, what about you? Okay, in my, my work, I have office equipment such mm -hmm. as printers, scanners, mm -hmm. cell phones, and sewing, no sé si pronuncio, pronuncio así, sewing machine. Sewing machines? Sewing machines. And sublimator machines, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wh where do you work? Uh, in uh, <laughs> exporter to clothing, to clothing, keep clothing. Uh, so it's a clothing factory? Yes. Oh, nice. There you go. It's studying export salva or something like that? Um, it's for United States, Canada. Uh -huh. and, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Very good. All righty. And are you part, are you like part of the process or are you like, do you have like an, an, an administrative uh, no, position? No, I'm an administrative. All right, all right. So you're in management. You're part of management. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right. Nice, Karen. Thank you very much, then. Okay. Now, before we continue, let's take attendance one more time. So same thing, right? Once you listen to your name, <clears throat> And then you just say present, right? So here we go. Um, Ana Beatriz Campos de Guzman. Present, teacher. All right, thank you, Beatriz. Nice. Y Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga Mejia. Present, teacher. Thank you, Blanquita. Good. Carlos Antonio Escobar Hernández. Present. Thank you very much, Carlos. Let's see next, Carlos Javier Crespin Lopez. Not here, I guess. Oh, yes. Carlos Javier. Yes, yes aquí. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right, very good. So let's see next. Wait. All right, there you go. 
Christian Ernesto Lazo Flores. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Christian. Y Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Thank you, Denise. Y next, Ember Giovanni Polio Morales. Present teacher. Thank you, Ember. Y Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you, Elizabeth. Y next, Jose Eduardo Guzmán Álvarez. I'm here, teacher. All right, thank you, Jose. Y next, Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. I'm here, teacher. All right, thank you very much. Y next, Karen Vanessa Morataya. Present. Thank you very much, Karen. Next, Luis Alfonso Martinez. Thank you, Luis. Excellent. Y next, Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Present. Thank you, Maria Elena. Nice. Next, Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Thank you, teacher. All right. Nice, Nelson. Thank you very much. Next, Omar Francisco Hernandez. Present. Thank you very much, Omar. Y next, Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present. Thank you, Oscar. And the last one, Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. All right. Thank you very much, Jenny. So we have full house today. Excellent. All righty then. Now, we have talked a little bit about, uh, well, imperatives, but not in a really specific way. So that's the next point here in the agenda. So let's do something to review, uh, some information related to imperatives. What are we going to do? Let me share my screen with you. I'm not sure if you have uh, seen this before. Have you ever seen this website before, quizzes? Are you familiar with it or no? Not really. Alguien lo había visto antes, no? Okay, so let me explain to you how you're going to, or what you are going to do with this. So pretty much, let's see. I'm going to share the link that we're going to use in the chat. In the chat, y les voy a compartir el link que vamos a ocupar. So, there you go. This link, it's going to take you here. It's going to take you to this website. This is an interactive lesson, right? In this interactive lesson, we're going to review some information, but at some point, you're going to be asked some questions, okay? Vamos a revisar un poco de información de los imperatives, pero luego de que eh, estudiemos un poquito acerca de ello, eh, les va a hacer como unas preguntas. No vamos a ver unas preguntas en pantalla y ustedes desde su compu o de su teléfono eh, van a responder esas preguntas, right? In real time. So, let's see. Cuando hagan clic en el link que les mandé, se los mandé en el chat de Zoom, no en el chat de WhatsApp, all right? Está en el chat de Zoom. So, y le va a pedir su nombre. Cuando ustedes se conecten, su nombre va a aparecer acá. Eh, creo que el, el game code ya va a estar, eh, ya no lo van a tener que poner. I'm not sure. Y, so it's just your name, all right? <coughs> There you go. Then we have Christian, Carlos, nice. Excellent. Maria Elena, very good. Let's wait for the rest. And then we start. Grisel, nice. Ember, good. Hi, teacher, can you pass the link, mm -hmm. please? Uh, the link is in the in the chat. Yes, but I, I just in coming. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me share it one more time. Let's see. All right, anytime. There you go. You let me know if you can see it this time. All right. <clears throat> okay, so now we have some more people. Excellent. 
So there is still some of you missing, but don't worry, you can just join if during the explanation. So teacher, sorry. Uh, yes, Luis. Me... Yo no, 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 no lo veo. Let's see, está en el chat de Zoom. Abrió el chat de Zoom, Luis. Sí, 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 teacher. Ajá. Ahí estoy. Ajá, le aparece el link. <coughs> y um, let me see. Cuando usted abre el ah. chat. Ajá. Yes, you saw? You found it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, nice. Good, good. So, just click on it. And then it's going to take you to the website that we're going to use. <laughs> All right, then. there you go, Luis, nice. Okay, if you're still, if you haven't been able to connect right now, don't worry, right? You can still connect during the explanation. So let's start. So we're going to check some information about imperatives, as I mentioned, then we're going to, well, you're going to have a little quiz, right? about the information we are just going to review. So let's see, let's give it a try. So imperatives, as you were saying at the beginning, imperatives are these expressions in which, or that we, that we use to provide commands, that we use to uh, provide directions as we saw in the conversation. And they are recognized uh, for, this fact that they don't have like a subject as someone mentioned at the beginning. So here you have this picture, for example, it says, have fun at school, don't hibernate during class, right? Have fun at school. So this is not exactly an order, right? So I'm not being, I'm not ordering this kid to, to have fun. It's an expression, but it makes use uh, of this imperative, right? And as the explanation here implies, the imperative is used to express a wish for someone's welfare and to give advice. So we also use imperatives to wish something good to any other person, right? That's the meaning of welfare. It's like about being okay or about feeling good. So, like in this case, have fun, right? When I'm saying have fun to another person, I'm trying to say that uh, what I hope is that this person enjoys whatever he or she is going to do. So, then we have the more, uh, probably uh, more common uh, examples on the uses of imperatives. And there we have that we use them to, uh, to give orders, instructions, warnings, to make offers, suggestions, invitations, requests, and recommendations. So as you can see, eh, when we talk about imperatives, it's not just about eh, giving orders to someone, right? That's like uh, usually what people think about imperatives, but it's a little bit more than that. So there you go. Now, how do we uh, how do we use them in terms of the structure? Whenever we are uh, talking about imperatives, as with any other tense, we can use affirmative and negative, right? So we use both. Whenever we're talking about affirmative uh, imperatives, pretty much we just need the base form of the verb, nothing else. Simple like that. So for example, I say, enjoy your vacation. Teacher, si le pongo la S, está bien. No, right, because we don't have a subject. It not, at least not there, like it's not visible, but we do have a subject. What is my subject, for example, in this sentence? What do you think is my subject? Enjoy your vacation. Or is it that we don't have a subject? Could be you? Me, the teacher? No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> exactly. You, your vacation? <laughs> it's you, right? So here we have like 
we have this uh, subject here that is, let's say, invisible, right? So whenever we have an imperative, this subject is hidden. Yeah, we cannot see it. In Spanish, we know it as sujeto tacito, right? It's something that we don't see. It's a subject that we don't see, but we know it's there. We're talking about you. You enjoy your vacation, right? You have fun. So, et cetera, et cetera. The subject is always going to be you. So very good. As in Spanish, we call this also a tacit subject, right? In English, it's the same term. So very good. We might also have an imperative in the negative form. So that means <clears throat> that we are going to use the auxiliary don't. Yeah, if I want to use the same imperative, but this time in the negative form, I need to use this auxiliary. So for example, don't worry too much about it now. Don't worry, right? When I, when I tell a person, don't worry, it's like, you, it's the same thing, right? You don't worry, but I don't have to use the subject. There's no need. But if I want to make it negative, I always will have to use don't. Teacher, ¿será que en algún momento podría ocupar doesn't? No. Why not? Because the subject is always going to be you. So there's no way that I can use you with doesn't, right? So we don't do that. You know that if the auxiliary or the corresponding auxiliary for you is going to be don't. So there you go. Then we have, here we have some examples on uh, affirmative and negative uh, uh, imperatives, like come here, right? Come here, turn on the lights, please. Sit down, please, stand up, please. So <clears throat> many people, as I was telling you at the beginning, they think that we are giving orders, so, ¿Y por qué lo voy a decir, por favor, si le estoy dando una orden, una indicación? Uh -uh. It's not just about that, right? So, not necessarily it's going to be a direct order, like really, uh, like if we were like soldiers or something like that. Uh -uh. I can be polite and I can use imperatives with some words that express courtesy, like, for example, please, right? Turn on the lights, please. And then we have some examples in the negative form, like don't be late, don't do that, do not walk on the grass. We might see negative uh, imperatives in signs, like when you go to a park, for example, you're going to find some signs uh, in which you're going to see that it says, do not walk on the grass. Don't cut the flowers, right? Don't feed the, the animals, et cetera, et cetera. So we might use this negative um, um, imperatives for prohibitions as well, or warnings, as it was uh, mentioned at the beginning. Then we have uh, attention. Right, do is used before affirmative imperatives for emphasis and to make polite requests. This is something that we almost mm, don't use, right? This is really weird to use unless you want to be really polite, unless you want to sound like you are being very formal or if you're making emphasis in the fact that you want somebody to do that. <clears throat> like really, if, if you're trying to be very emphatic on that, it sounds weird. I mean, you might find it weird, but it's possible, right? Do sit down, do come in, right? Do come in. I can say come in, but a person might say, it might be reluctant sometimes maybe to enter a house or any other place. And I can say, do come in, please, right? So I'm just being, 
I'm just making emphasis on the fact that I really want you to do it. Right. Do sit down. If we don't have like an equivalent for this in Spanish without the need of using another expression probably. But in English, this is the way we make or we give emphasis to a sentence, right? Even if it's affirmative, we would use the auxiliary do. Any questions so far? So far, so good. Teacher. Uh -huh. Tell me, Christian. In um, relation to this. Uh, eh, al uso de dúo en este caso eh, ¿cuál sería en sí el significado a la hora de decir do sit down? ¿tiene uh -huh. el mismo significado o nada más es para eh, ser un poco más cortés a la hora de hacer un, una solicitud, algo así algo Exacto. así comprendo no sé si yes. y Bien. tienen el mismo significado en este caso eh, they do, right? Lo que cambia, eh, Cristian, en este caso es tal vez la intención, eh, tal vez el tono en el que yo lo digo al utilizar el do. Cuando yo ocupo do, estoy tratando, de, a, de, aparte de sonar un poco más formal, eh, también hago énfasis en que realmente quiero que esto suceda. ¿no? Si alguien me dice, si yo le digo a alguien, sit down, let's have a coffee. Y la, esa persona me dice, no, I'm sorry, I don't have time, right? Y yo le vuelvo a decir, do sit down, let's have a coffee. Ese do sit down es como de, de plano, no, es como cuando en español nosotros utilizaríamos otra, le añadiríamos otra palabra y diríamos, no hombre, siéntese, tomémonos el café. O sea, esa expresión que me ayuda a darle esa idea de que yo quiero que la persona se quede, Eso es lo que hace el do, right? No necesariamente siendo una expresión extra, sino solo el auxiliar, pero me ayuda a transmitir esta idea, right? Teacher, lo mismo a, ¿ah? yes? Uh, eh, con respecto a lo mismo, tengo una duda. Ajá. ¿Y se utilizaría en cualquier pronombre? Mm, no, no exacto, sí, no, right? Yes and no. ¿Por qué sí y no? Ahorita estamos viendo que es el do solo para el eh, imperative, ¿verdad? Sin embargo, podría haber otra, eh, otro contexto en el que pueda utilizar do o does siempre en una oración afirmativa. Y esto es algo que tal vez no mucho se ve. Eh, al menos no al, a un, a un, a, cuando empezamos a, a aprender inglés, pero lo pueden llegar a escuchar más adelante, que es, por ejemplo, si yo digo, she does like cake. Bah. La oración tradicional en inglés diría, she likes cake. She likes cake. Bueno, a ella le gusta el pastel. She likes cake. I add the S because I'm talking about the third person singular. So we know that if I'm using he, she, it, I need to use the S in the verb. But then what happens here? She does like cake. ¿Por qué le, por qué le puse ese does ahí? Lo mismo. También en oraciones, no solo en presente simple, podría ser que también en pasado, y... Utilizo este auxiliar para hacer énfasis. Tal vez alguien, escuché que alguien dijo que, uh, no sé, que de pronto a, a Elizabeth no le gusta el pastel. Escuché que dijeron por ahí que a Elizabeth no le gustaba el pastel. A Elizabeth, Elizabeth, do you like cake? No, I don't. Oh my God, entonces escuché bien. No, me... All right. <laughs> Qué mal es. Any, any sugar, any. You don't like sweet things. Mm, oh no. my God. Only, only you... chocolate. Only, oh, only soda. But... Oh my God. 
but pastry, pan dulce, no. No. Dichosa, no. dichosa usted. <laughs> la envidia, <laughs> Elizabeth. But anyway, bueno, digamos que Elizabeth sí le gustaba. Entonces, yo escuché que alguien dijo que no. Elizabeth doesn't like cake. Y yo me meto en la plática y digo, she does like cake. Ese she does like cake es como, estoy haciendo énfasis. Es como si yo diría en español, no hombre, si le gusta el pastel. She does like cake. So, that's the power, right? That's the, the punch that this auxiliary brings to a sentence when it's affirmative. Usualmente nosotros, eh, como teacher, decimos siempre que ocupamos un auxiliar cuando es negativo o cuando es pregunta, ¿verdad? Es la regla básica. Pero también tenemos esta, estos eh, escenarios en los que si yo quiero hacer énfasis en algo, bueno, en la acción en este caso, y en una oración afirmativa, también puedo ocupar ese ese auxiliar, right? The same happens with do, with does, and with did. So, it might happen, right? So, there you go. Any other question you might have? Clear as crystal? Clear as horchata? <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. Now, if you don't have questions, I do have questions for you. Now, here comes the quiz. You're going to see some questions on the screen. So you need to answer based on what we studied in this review about uh, imperatives. So let's see. Van a ver las preguntas en la pantalla. Ustedes van a seleccionar la opción que les, pare que les parezca que es la correcta. All right. Let's see how you do. So here we go. Number one. So it says, me alone, I don't want to talk with you. What do you think is the correct answer? What's the form of the verb that you need to use? Let's see, time sticking. Nine seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see. Did you? Uh huh. Tell me. There you go, Maria Elena. First place. Christian in the car. Se el tiempo. Yes, time is a little bit is short, right? So. The correct answer should have been leave. Leave me alone. Left is the simple past. Leaved uh -uh, doesn't exist. Left doesn't exist, right? So the correct answer is leave. Why? Because we say if we are using imperatives, we use the base form of any verb. So la forma base del verbo, sin conjugar. So there you go. Let's see the next one. Number two. The window, it's too cold outside. And here is really... Wait, it's an awful toy. It's too cold outside. And here is pretty something. We'll never know. Let's see, time, time, five, four, three, two, one, and let's see. <laughs> so we have, all right, Maria Elena still in the first place, Ember going up, Kristen, third place. Don't open, very good. So in this case, Negative. Don't open. Uh -huh. Don't open the window. It's too cold. It's too cold outside. And here's pretty. Uy, pero no, no nos salió completa la oración. So anyway, maybe it's pretty. Here's pretty hot. Or it's pretty warm. Or it's pretty nice. We would. 
many possibilities there. But the uh, imperative should have been negative. Don't open. Next one. <laughs> what about this one? She, she has news for you. Jenny, she has okay. news for you. Let's see, let's see. Time's about to finish. And five, four, three, two, one. I. So let's see. The imperative here you have been. Same position. Call. Call. Very good. Call Jenny. She has news for you. We cannot use calling because we don't use the ing with imperatives. We just use the verb in the base form, and that's it, right? Whether affirmative or negative. In this case, affirmative. Call Jenny. Next uh, one. Firma. Very good. Here we go. What about this one? The news tonight. Can you talk about me? The news tonight. They'll talk about me. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, same positions, nice. So we have, <laughs> excellent. Watch the news tonight. I'm telling my friend maybe or my family, right? Hey, watch the news tonight. Don't talk about me. One more time, watch in simple past. Uh, uh, remember is the base form of the verb. Not simple past, ng, no future, nothing. Just the base form. Next one. <clears throat> Your hands with uh, with soap. Your, no, it's you. Like you're still your. Your hands with soap. <clears throat> Let's see. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and stop. <laughs> All right, some positions changing there. So wash, wash your hands with soap, right? There you go. Next one. Your eyes, you must not see that. You must not see that. There you go. So we have close your eyes. Closes, uh-uh. Close your eyes. You must not see that. Very good. We're about to finish. Number seven now. <clears throat> 21. 21. Okay. 
Christian going to the second place now. Don't show, don't show to anyone, right? Or don't show it to anyone. So in this case, don't because it's negative, but use the base form. We cannot add the S to the verb because we're using an auxiliary. Don't show, doesn't show uh, uh, because this is an an imperative and in, in imperatives the subject is always you so we don't or well, we can use a does or doesn't right only don't so let's see next one number eight to finally i'm working To find me, I'm warning you. Positions. So don't try, don't try to find me. I'm warning you, right? Don't try, uh -uh. don't try base form. Let's see, next one, number nine. <laughs> the medicine, it's gonna help you. That's for me. The medicine, it's gonna help you. Teacher, me sacó a mí, teacher. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Jose. Maybe it was the connection. Jesus, all right. So let's see. It says, all right, say positions. So drink. Drink the medicine. It's going to help you, right? Drink the medicine. Very good. So the last one. My secret to anyone, okay? Oh man, it's raining. My secret to anyone. So there you go. Oh my God, Christian going to the first place in the last moment, okay. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Final scores we have. First place, Christian. Second, Maria Elena. Third place, Carlos. Fourth, Juan Carlos, and fifth place, Grisel. So very good, congratulations. Now, with this, we pretty much have reviewed the use of imperatives, right? So don't forget a couple of things. First, eh, the subject is always you, and we don't write the subject in the sentence. It's always tacit. A, imperatives can be affirmative or negative. If it's affirmative, just use the base form of the verb. If it's negative, you always use the auxiliary don't, right? And that's pretty much it. So very good. Now, in your books, you have um, something about the use of these imperatives. So let me see. 
there you have a little exercise on page 14. On page 14, you have like a little diagram. Let me share my screen one more time. In which you have like some sort of chocolate, I guess. And it says, look at the diagram of how this chocolate product is made. Label each step in order uh, using the words in the diagram. And then we have already the first one, separate. Separate the raw materials to get only the best cocoa beans. Well, here it says coca, but it's cocoa beans. So I'm gonna give you a, just like, let's say five minutes for you to complete this in the same groups that you were working for the previous activity. So uh, you will work in the, in the breakout rooms and then you're going to decide with your classmates how the order should go with the process. So I'm opening there. Uh, let me see. I'm opening the, the small rooms one more time so that you can join, you will have just five minutes, all right, to work in your group and to decide how to order the diagram here. So there you go, five minutes now. If you have problems to join uh, the groups, just let me know.
All right. Good. Put your back. Let's wait for the rest. They still have some seconds. <clears throat> and then we'll check it together. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> All right, five seconds, and the rest is going to be here. And now. All right. So I guess now we're all back to the main session. So let's see. Let's check this uh, just to finish with the exercise. So we already have the first one, and it says separate the raw materials to get only the best cocoa beans. Volunteer to go with the second one. <clears throat> Any ideas for the second one? I need to share. Uh -huh. Let's see. Check, check all the ingredients to make the chocolate table. Uh, the chocolate tablet, right? Very good. So check all the ingredients to make the chocolate tablet. Very good. Nice, Beatriz. Excellent. Number three. Volunteer. Me, teacher. All right, let's see, Christian. Maybe uh, ground. <coughs> ground the cocoa beans bean into powder. powder. Very good. Ground. Uh, Excellent. Very ground. good. Uh, teacher, ground in this bean. case, ground, the meaning yeah. is uh, in Spanish. Picar o moler, we will moler. Say. Picar okay. o moler, exactly. Okay. Uh, as many other words in English, uh, it depends on the context, right? Like ground, mm -hmm. el suelo, like right? ground, pero también significa moler, es también es un verbo, right? So it, it means uh, moler, right? So good. What about number four? Volunteer. Hey, teacher. teacher. Mix <laughs> with the board word. Curtis. With milk. Mix the powder with milk. Very good. Mix the powder with milk. Nice. So let me see number five. Any other volunteer? Assemble uh -huh. the chocolate Assemble. package to finish. Very good. Nice, Karen. Assemble the chocolate package to finish. Right. Very good. E number six, a simple paste. <laughs> Me, teacher. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, Label a simple paste. Yeah. Label a simple paste. Mm, no, not label. Something else. Simple paste. I'm sorry. Form a simple. Form. Form. I have form a uh, simple okay. paste. Right. Very good. Uh, next one. The package. Label. The uh -huh. package. Exactly. Here's where we use label. Right. Etiquetar, label, label the package. Very good. And the last one, quality, quality control. Yes, check. Check, exactly. Check quality in quality control. So there you go. Check was a repeated twice, right? We use check for number two. And for the last one, so very good. Alrighty, so all of these verbs, as you can see, they go in the base form because they are all part of instructions. And we said we use uh, imperatives also to provide instructions, so good. Okay, guys, so I'm going to take the attendance and I know it's almost time uh, to go. So let me see, uh, same thing, right? I'll, uh, once you hear your name, 
just say present and let me see here we go all right so uh, number one Ana Beatriz Campos presentation thank you Beatriz very good e Blanca Elizabeth Alvarenga Presentation. Thanks, Blanquita. Uh, Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Carlos, by the way, hoy le tocan los 10 eh, minutitos al final. No tiene problema en quedarse, ¿verdad? Estamos bien. Nice, excellent, good. So we continue then. Uh, Carlos Javier Crespin. Not here. No, right? So let's see. Christian Ernesto Lazo. All right, very good. Carlos Javier Tostado. Mm, no, not here. Well, anyway. <laughs> let's see. Denise Grisel Brizuela. Present teacher. Thank you, Grisel. Uh, next, Ember Giovanni Polio. Present teacher. Thank you, Amber. Uh, Francisca Elizabeth Martinez. Elizabeth, not here, se le desconectó. All right, not here. Uh, Jose Eduardo Guzmán. Jose Eduardo, se le desconectó también. So we continue, Juan Carlos Rivas, Jovel. Juan Thank Carlos. You, All right, Thank you. nice. Thank you, JC. Uh, next, Karen Vanessa Morataya. Present. Thank you, Karen, nice. Uh, Luis Alfonso Martinez. Present, teacher. All right, thank you, Luis. Uh, Maria Elena Guadalupe Peñate. I'm here. All right, thank you, Maria Elena. Eh, Nelson Gavarrete Merino. Present teacher. All right, thank you, Nelson. Next, Omar Francisco Hernandez. Omar Francisco, not here. Next, Oscar Arnulfo Villatoro. Present. Thank you, Oscar. And last but not least, Jenny Suleima Santos. Present. Thank you, Jenny. Very good. Okay, guys. So this will, uh, well, we're going to stop right here. Well, thank you very much for joining uh, today's lesson. As always, a pleasure for me uh, to have been here with you. Uh, God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, get some rest. Have a good night. And also, don't forget to practice. All right. Thank you, teacher. Yeah. Bye. My pleasure. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Thank you teacher. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bye. too. Bye-bye. See -bye. you tomorrow, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. OK. Nos quedamos solo con Carlos. Nice. OK. So let's see. Wait, wait a second. Este okay. otro Carlos se durmió. <ríe> Ajá, se quedaron ahí dormidos. <ríe> ahí está. Ok, vaya Carlos. Y estos 10, bueno, estos 10, bueno, 8 minutitos que nos quedan y son para aprovechar alguna duda que usted tenga, y alguna pregunta. Como siempre le digo, no necesariamente tiene que ser de los temas que que estemos viendo ahorita puede ser un tema que haya quedado por ahí en el aire de los niveles anteriores y alguna duda que usted tenga en general con el inglés no, me, me hubiera dicho eso antes <risa> lo agarré prevenido no, no realmente, realmente sí me hubiese gustado haber aprovechado esto un poco más adelante para, pero ahorita hay poco material y sin embargo sí, pero ahí se puede tengo... repetir Sí, sí, sí. Sin embargo, ahí tengo un par, un par de, 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 de cositas que no me quedaron muy claras. A ver, a ver. Como, como, como lo, los primeros del, del Fierce Dance, eh, ah, los del... Ah, segundo, los sequencers. Sí, los sequencers. Ajá. Ah, ya. Bueno. Y... Hay, hay algunos que, que, que sí, realmente 
trato de ponerme ahí, pero no me quedaron Ajá. muy claros. Ajá. Creo que con eso de los, de los sequencers y um, quizá de todos, los que más confunden podría ser before y after. Y before... Y, y, y había una combinación cuando Ajá. decía after dent. After ejemplo, that. Uh, after ah, that. Esa, esa sí me noqueó. Esa, ah. esa... Ah, ya. Yeah. Ok. Bye. Esa, after that. Ajá, after that. Bye. Esto es lo que les decía la vez anterior que um, dependerá, digamos, de la puntuación que estemos ocupando. O sea, primero de la idea que querramos decir, ¿no? De eso sí. va a depender. Si yo voy a ocupar una de estas y qué puntuación voy a ocupar yo con estas expresiones. Por ejemplo, con before, y usualmente yo no ocupo una coma. Yo puedo decir, eh, I went to the office. No, I went to the cafeteria before I eh, arrived to the office. Acá, por ejemplo. So, en este caso, prácticamente no ocupo coma, por ejemplo, ni nada, sino utilizo solo la palabra, la expresión, y ahí voy, ¿verdad? No hay problema. Con la mayoría de sequencers, eh, si se acuerda, por ejemplo, poníamos primero, coma, tal cosa, ¿no? Segundo, coma, tal cosa. Then, Tal cosa, ¿no? Siempre, siempre va una coma antes del, eh, después del sequencer. Before, no. Before es algo que yo lo puedo ocupar así nomás. Y ahí tenemos a los after, que creo que es donde varios mmm, como que se, se confundieron un poquito en cuándo lo ocupo con coma, cuándo no le pongo la coma. So, está en mute, Carlos. <risa> Perdón, lo que me terminó de confundir era de que el material tenía errores. Que, que usted decía ahí de que no debería Ajá. de llevar un... Ahí sí. En parte. Ajá, cabal, cabal. Que algunas de las cosas que estaban ahí no era como deberíamos describirlo, de ¿no? Entonces, ¿cómo sería un buen ejemplo de cada uno de los usos del after? Yo podría decir after... I went to, sigamos con the office. After I went to the office, I visited my parents. After I went to the office, I visited my parents. Esto es un ejemplo en el que el after, aparte de que va enlazado con, una, con otra idea, y va a hacer uso de esa coma. ¿vale? Cuando yo empiezo una oración con after, eh, es porque le voy a agregar algo. Después de que hice algo, entonces yo sé que siempre que vaya el after al inicio, boom, voy a poner una coma después de la idea que va a seguir. Podría ser también que, por ejemplo, tenga eh, al revés. I visited my parents after I went to the office. Y aquí creo que fue donde algunos se confundieron porque decíamos que after y después. Entonces, visité a mis padres, después fui a la oficina. Si yo lo traduzco literalmente, me voy a confundir. Sí. Creo que ahí fue donde muchos se quedaron. Y entonces, ¿qué, ¿qué es lo que pasó primero, no? De claro, este... la, como que la secuencia de eventos, si se traduce literalmente, Ajá. no coinciden. Exacto. Ajá, ahí es donde creo que no, no, nos enchivolamos eh, con el orden de los eventos. Pero, sí. ¿cuál, en esta idea, cuál acción es la que pasó primero, Carlos? Según lo entiende usted. Es que lo lógico o, o, o lo correcto sería que, que antes de ir a la oficina. Ajá, eso fue lo primero entonces, fui a la oficina. No, la, la visita de los padres. Ah, primero visité a mis papás. 
Va, aquí es donde está el error. Y si yo quiero traducir esto, yo diría, yo visité a mis padres y luego de ir a la oficina, o después de ir a la oficina, podríamos decirlo, no después yo fui, sino después de ir, después de que yo fui, diríamos, después de que yo fui a la oficina. Yo visité a mis padres después de que yo fui a la oficina. So, este after, si bien significa después, no nos está dando la idea de que van las cosas en el orden que están escritas, sino que eh, hice esto después de que hice esto. Right. Esa es la idea que nos da el after cuando no lleva coma, ¿verdad? Es más sí. fácil de entenderlo quizás cuando le ponemos la comita, porque ahí se iba literal en el orden que es, ¿no? Después de que fui a la oficina, coma, visité a mis papás. Y ahí sí, no hay pierde, ¿verdad? Porque cabal sí. está el, el orden en el que pasaron los eventos, digamos. La cosa es cuando no lleva la coma. Ajá. Pero la, la traducción que se hace es la mala. O sea, bueno, de Exacto. parte mía, de parte mía. Porque, porque también está bastante claro de la segunda forma. Ah, Entonces, ah, mis padres después de que fui a la oficina. De, de que fui a la oficina. Ajá. O después de ir a la oficina, podríamos decir también. Exacto. Okay. Creo que tal vez al inicio, cuando uno se lo presenta así de, de entrada, creo que uno se va a chuco, como decimos, porque queremos traducir el after literal. ¿verdad? Después fui a la oficina, decimos, porque estamos haciendo la traducción plana, ¿verdad? o sea, literalmente. Creo que eso fue la, la pequeña confusión que tuvimos, porque los demás eh, sequencers, es lo que le digo, todos empiezan, por ejemplo, first, coma, y tal cosa. Sí. Fear, ajá. second, fear, ajá. Ajá. Y ahí hasta seguimos. el final, finally. Ajá. Exacto. Ajá. Y llevan coma. Exacto, ajá. So, creo que pero, solo... Pero, pero, pero sí, e, esto, esto, esto sí, haber repasado esa pequeña parte me ayuda, me ayuda a entender, me ayuda a entender. <ríe> qué bueno, qué bueno, me llega entonces. Y ahí quizás lo último, el after that, el after that es como cuando yo digo, first, I went to the supermarket. After that, I, eh, let's say, I went to the gas station, por decir algo. Este es el uso del after that. Y puedo empezar cualquier idea, ¿no? Aquí puse un sequencer para like, como seguirle más como el orden al... Eh, a toda esta, esta vuelta digamos que vino, primero sí. I went to the supermarket y aquí es donde ocupo el after that que esta frase necesita como información que esté de fondo ¿no? o información previa no puedo empezar con el after that así de buena primera porque después de eso lo traduciríamos después de eso o después de esto pero si no hay nada antes es como de, después de que vea Sí. Entonces necesito esta oración acá para que tenga sentido el uso de la expresión sí. after that. ¿Qué necesito entonces? Terminar la idea ¿verdad? con un punto, un punto y coma y luego seguir after that, después de eso, coma, fui a la, a la gasolinera. ¿verdad? I went to the gas station. Siempre sería necesaria la coma después del after that. Exacto. Sí, aquí lo ocupamos como si fueran los otros sequencers, como el first, el second, todo eso. Ahí sí. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Y eso sería. Ajá. Nice. Ok, teacher. Thank you very much. All right. Excellent. My pleasure, Carlos. Eh, well, I'm glad that we could eh, clear or clarify these doubts today. And don't worry, right? Eventually, if at some point, eh, You need like another session, we can have it. Uh, because we have like, let me see, 20 days and you are like 15 people, there's going to be a week in which you can take another turn just to clarify any other doubts you might have. Okay, excellent. Wonderful. Excellent. All right, thank you very much then, Carlos. Have a good night. 
and I'll see you then tomorrow. Have a good night, teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlos. Tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.